Welcome to part one of evaluating measurements. When we collect data in our experiments, it's going to be important for us to be able to evaluate those measurements in terms of how good they are. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how we can evaluate measurements and how we can represent our error in those measurements quantitatively. To help us talk about how we can discuss and evaluate data, let's look at some sample data from a density lab, similar to the density lab that you did in class, uh, that gives four trials per student and the density was calculated in each trial then an average was taken and we have sample data from student A and student B. We also have the actual value of the substance that was being calculated 7.24 grams per milliliter and let's take a look at some ways to discuss this data. The first thing we want to evaluate is the accuracy. So accuracy is how close to the true value or the actual value uh, the measured results were. By taking a look at the individual calculations for density of each student as well as their final averages uh, we can see pretty clearly that student A was much closer to the actual value with 7.23 than student B was with 8.01. So we would say that student A's data, this set of data, is more accurate than this set of data, student B's data. The next thing we can talk about is precision. Now some people use these two words interchangeably, but they have very different meanings for our purposes in the lab. Okay, in science, accuracy and precision mean two different things. Precision refers to how close the measured values are to each other. So in this case, we're using density as, a, as our measured value, and student B's measurements are much closer to each other than student A's. Student A has more of a scatter of data that averages out pretty well. Uh, but student B's data is very precise. All the data points are very close to each other. 8.01, 8.02, 8.01, and 8.00. So student B may not have been very accurate with their results, but the results are much more precise than student A's. Now this particular scenario where student B is very precise but has low accuracy uh, would lead us to believe that student B is probably not doing something wrong themselves is actually indicative of something that's not error but we refer to as bias. And this is not bias in the sort of traditional sense that you've heard of it before. This term bias when we talk about data it means that there's something systematically wrong with what was happening in student B's experiments. For example, the balance, the electronic balance that student B was using may not have been calibrated properly. So student B, even though they were doing everything correctly, was getting results that were consistently off by the same amount. So this idea of bias is really referring to a systematic error that would, be const that would be consistently throwing off your data by the same amount. Now one of the problems with referring to data solely as accurate or precise is that they are somewhat relative in the way we use them. Uh, like student A is more accurate than student B, uh, student B is more precise than student A, so it's nice to have a quantitative way to evaluate how much error there is in someone's data. And that brings us to something called percent error. I'm using the symbol percent there. Percent error is a way to represent the degree of error that you have in your results. It follows a very simple formula. Percent error is the experimental value minus the actual value divided by the actual value and all multiplied by 100. The multiplying by 100 makes it into a percent and this part of the formula is where you plug in your information which we're going to go ahead and do for this set of data. Student B's experimental value is 8.01 grams per milliliter. The actual value is up here, 7.24 grams per milliliter. So we're going to just plug this in. 8.01 minus 7.24 divided again by the actual value, 7.24, and then all that multiplied by 100. And this is going to give us a percent error of 10.6%. So student B was off by 10.6%. That's the degree of error in student B's results. So we talked about how to represent error and how to discuss accuracy and precision and apply that to sets of data. Uh, in the next part of this evaluating measurement series, we're going to talk about significant figures and how they can be used to represent uncertainty in our measurements.